This video is all about the pros and cons of living in Clarington, Ontario. I'll include lots of area footage as well, so you'll definitely want to stick around if you're considering a move to this area. My name is Lilia Trulove. I'm a real estate agent and I've been helping people buy and sell homes in the Durham region and East Toronto for almost 20 years. I'd love to help you with your move too. All my contact information is in the description below. And you can download my free Durham region guide at the same time if you want some help deciding where in Durham you should be moving to. Now, just in case you're totally new to Durham, Clarington is the most eastern part of the Durham region. It's actually a huge area that includes four urban centers, Curtis, Bowmanville, Newcastle, and Orono, as well as 14 hamlets. These areas are quite distinct and will require videos of their own to really go into enough detail. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss when those videos come out. But this video will give you an overall picture of Clarington. So pro number one, small town charm. If you're looking for that slower pace of life, quieter small town living, maybe that country property or a larger yard, or you're just wanting to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city, Clarington is where you want to be looking. And if you're wanting that Hallmark movie type downtown area to spend your weekends, you'll find that here as well. Several of them actually. In Bowmanville, along and surrounding King Street, you'll find beautiful historic downtown Bowmanville. Boutique shops, restaurants, and pubs with outdoor patios. The village of Newcastle has shops, restaurants, and markets. They've also done a wonderful job here of maintaining the historic feel to even the new construction and stores that have been built over the years. Orono also has a charming downtown Main Street with shops and a cafe. Nothing screams small town living more than a fair, and Orono's home to the Orono Fair that's been happening for more than, oh, uh, sorry, for more than 150 years, and festivals, so many festivals and other events. Maple Fest in the spring, Easter events, Apple Fest in the fall, Christmas markets and Santa visits throughout December. There are fun festivals and events held throughout the year in Clarington. There's always something going on. Pro number two is safe communities. Clarington is filled with safe communities to live in. When you look at the Durham Regional Police Crime Map, you will see the low amount of crime in Clarington compared to the rest of Durham. Over the last month, there were a higher number of assaults in Bowmanville, though still not high compared to the rest of Durham. But looking at all the other crimes, break and enters, car thefts, robberies, sexual violations and thefts, there's really only a handful of crimes throughout all of Clarington. Of course, one of the main reasons is that the population is lower, but living in a safe community is always one of the top priorities for families, which leads me into my next positive. Pro number three, family-friendly communities. Besides the safe, low crime environment in Clarington, there are a few other reasons why it's a family friendly place to live. For one, there are lots of families here. You have a great schools, really nice community centers with pools and ice rinks, great sports programs, and there's always family friendly events happening like I talked about earlier. Pro number four is outdoor recreation. Clarington's located on the shores of Lake Ontario and also has forests, trails, and crown land a perfect mix of all types of outdoor recreation. You can swim and boat in Lake Ontario. The Port of Newcastle has a beautiful marina and a restaurant. Or if you like to hike or mountain bike, there are so many popular trails in the area, including the Orono Crownlands, which has 15 kilometers of well-marked and maintained nature trails, or the Long Sioux Conservation Area with 18 kilometers of trails. You'll find a few beautiful golf courses in Clarington, and if you're wanting to go skiing or snowboarding in the winter, Brimacombe is in Orono, just off of the 115, and is a great spot to hit the slopes. Finally, pro number five is home prices. Clarington is part of the Greater Toronto Area, which is known for being very expensive. But Clarington has much more affordable real estate compared to Toronto and even to the rest of Durham. The average price of a home in June 2023 was just over $936,000. That's higher than Oshawa and also Brock, but Brock is quite a ways north, but lower average price than any other area in Durham. You'll also get a lot of home for your money here. And there are so many beautiful neighborhoods to choose from. So let's get into the cons. Negative number one is the distance from Toronto. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Clarington is a huge area, so if you're in Curtis, the drive won't be much worse than it would be from, say, Oshawa. 
but from Newcastle, for example, the drive into downtown Toronto is going to be over an hour. And of course, traffic can make that drive significantly longer. So can winter weather. The distance is considered close enough by many people in Clarington to go to Toronto for both work and fun. But it's still a decent distance to travel, especially if you have to do it five days a week. The other thing to know is that if you don't want to drive, the GO Train's last stop is currently in Oshawa. There are future plans to extend that. The Ford government just announced in June that the Lakeshore Equine will be extended almost 20 kilometers east into Bowmanville. Construction has not started yet, though. So, for now, there are public transportation options, but they require transfers between a bus and the train. This obviously will add on significant travel time. So, if you plan to live in Clarington and commute to Toronto, you need to consider the time required to make that commute. Con number two, things tend to close down early. Remember one of the positives that I mentioned of the slower, quieter pace of life? Well, what comes along with that is that you're not going to have a lot of nightlife here. For example, downtown Bowmanville has a twilight Tuesday in July for what they call late night shopping in their downtown area. But this is from 5 to 9 p.m. You will notice a lot of restaurants and shops closing down at 8 or 9 p.m. Now, you will find a few pubs and the Boston Pizza in Bowmanville, for example, that will be open late night, but a lot of stuff closes down earlier. Con number three is a lack of services. Like any small town or rural area, Clarington doesn't have all of the services of a large city. So as if you need a specialist appointment with a doctor, you're likely traveling. There is a hospital in Bowmanville, so for emergencies, that's probably where you'll be headed. But people are sometimes having trouble finding a local family doctor, although that can be said for a lot of places right now. You shouldn't have any trouble getting a dentist or a veterinarian, though. Also, there is lots of shopping. But again, if you're looking for specific stores, you'll probably have to at least go into other areas in Durham. Closest Costco is in Oshawa, for example. And lastly, my negative number four is limited employment opportunities. Clarington does have some big employers. St. Mary's Cement has a plant in Bowmanville, and there's the Darlington Nuclear Plant. However, the majority of opportunities are in neighboring cities. This may mean a longer commute to work or finding a job outside of Clarington. That finishes up my list of the pros and cons of moving to Clarington. Check out my other videos that tour some of the specific areas within Clarington to really get a feel for what these places are like. And don't forget, if you need help with your move, reach out anytime. All my contact information is included in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.